Karl Lagerfeld was interesting because he had said in an interview that he didn't agree with gay marriage at all. He thought it was so bourgeois, and why would gay people want to get married like straight people? And then his, his thinking evolved, and in a later interview, he said he thought the idea of two women getting married was lovely, that it would be wonderful if two women could get married, and sort of the idea of a child having two mothers was really lovely. And he sent out on the runway two really beautiful brides together. And we wanted to get the, the bridal gowns for this show, but they turned out to be decorated with a certain kind of feather, and we were afraid it would be seized by the a Fish and Wildlife Association bringing it into the US, and then it would be destroyed, and I would owe Chanel, you know, a million dollars to, to uh, pay for this. So we went and reached out to various gay friends, and, and so uh, one set of women both went in the white bridal gown. Another two women chose to go in their interpretation of dandy chic, and then two, two gay men, including one very important in the American fashion industry, who got married at City Hall wearing just sort of gray flannel suits. But at that point, companies like J. Crew were, um, were promoting clothes for gay and lesbian marriages as well, and were explicitly showing gay and lesbian couples in their advertising. So it was though there seemed to be a kind of watershed moment. And yet, at the very time this was happening, other things were happening in other parts of the world that were making it very clear, once again, that this is not a question of time going onward and upward towards progress, because more and more there were African countries and Eastern European countries that were striking back at gay people. In fact, I myself was invited to speak in St. Petersburg while I was working on this show, and it was right when St. Petersburg passed a law against making homosexual propaganda. And suddenly people were writing me saying, you can't give that talk here. You're gonna get arrested, you're gonna be hit with a huge fine, and, and it was, uh, they even joked at the press opening, saying, don't worry, when you're jailed, we'll bring you bread and water, which was all very unnerving. I mean, it wasn't so much, I didn't think I was gonna end up in the gulag. On the other hand, if they hit me with some $40,000 fine, that would be very difficult to pay off. So ultimately what the organizers did was they found a private museum, because you couldn't make propaganda in public, but in a private space it was still legal. And then they vetted everyone to make sure that nobody under 18 could come to the lecture. So it was very surreal working on this show in the US when it was greeted with great pleasure except by a handful of right-wing commentators, and then to be in a country where suddenly the idea of even talking about contributions of gays to society or gay marriage was being made illegal, and subsequently, of course, was made illegal throughout Russia. So again, the idea that there's some kind of teleology, that things are moving onward and upward, is not true. There are jerks and, and changes in the history of how society deals with gay and lesbian and bisexual and transgender people. And fashion as well is not something, of course, that goes onward and upward, as some theorists fantasized in the old days that somehow fashion would outgrow itself and would become some kind of pure, practical, utilitarian utilitarian anti-fashion, which of course doesn't happen at all. It always will look back, look forward, but this, what happens in fashion is largely harmless, uh, certainly ubiquitous with the time frame of fashion, and yet when we put fashion against the contributions of individuals, we find a very much more complicated picture. So whereas at the end people were wondering, Will gays still make a big contribution to fashion once they've just become part of normal, old, boring society? And then suddenly it seemed, well, maybe we don't have to worry about that, sadly, anytime soon.